the Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, here today with Ayana. Oh, darn it. I've got to look at my notes. <laughs> this is what happens when you're live. I had it. I was practicing. Yeah. Nefertari. Is that right, Ayana? Yes. <laughs> okay. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you and your business and how you serve people. Well, I am a spiritual life and business coach. So I help women tap back into their abundance and their joy through their life and through their business. So it just depends on what you need. <laughs> awesome. So so that's a, a big range of help. And then you also have, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but you also have a store where you sell magic wands. Tell everybody about that. <laughs> So I have a little goddess shop where I share like little magical utensils. Eventually I'm going to sell crystals, but I have magic card decks. I have magic wands, so many nice things in my little goddess shop. So yeah, magical. Are you still here? <laughs> Magic of live television, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you got started with um, with what you do now. It started off with the craving for freedom, right? So I mm. started off in the personal growth industry, just healing my own, honestly, depression and anything that wasn't joy. So I started off listening to the coaches, listening to the personal growth people. And I spent like seven, eight years just learning, growing. And then I learned about entrepreneurship from Marie Forleo. And I took her course and was like, oh my God, I have to turn this love for spirituality, for personal growth, for healing into a way to support me. So that's how it happened. That's amazing. So tell me a little bit about that transition and how that all happened. Because I know for so many people, it's not the smooth journey that we had all planned for, right? <laughs> Um, absolutely not the smooth journey at all, but it's been, it's been not so bad. You know, um, I started my, I graduated college and I took a couple part-time jobs. Then I went, I started network marketing for a little while. I didn't spend a lot of time in that. Um, but then I moved into this business. It was an accident. Oh my God, that's the perfect story. So I was in network marketing, right? <clears throat> And, you know, back in the day, they used to send DMs to everybody. We're trying to get you on a call to talk with us. So I had hired a coach and I had already sent out all my messages like, hey, do you want to hop on a call with me? And I had just hired a business coach. And the business coach was like, do you want to grow your network marketing or do you want to grow your coaching business? And I was like, hmm, my passion is with spirit and manifestation and law of attraction. Let's focus on that. So I had a girl set up to do a call with me for network marketing. <laughs> And we just switched it to a coaching call. And I did some forgiveness exercise. Oh my God, that was the most beautiful thing in my whole life. I did some forgiveness exercises with her. We did some visualization work. It was just the most healing experience. And I was like, is this what coaching is? I thought I didn't want to be a coach. Indeed, I actually do want to be a coach. <laughs> so me and her had that magical session, the most magical first session of my life. And that was the start of it. She was my first client. And she ended up telling me um, a few months later that she had a mentor. Somebody told her that a mentor was going to come in. She had went to get a reading. And the reading had said a mentor is going to come into your life in a few months who's really going to serve you. And I had just so happened to show up at that time. So, yeah, that's how it started. So, so good. So good. Well, and I know. I know that there's a story with your car too that kind of made a big difference. A huge difference. So that is the story of, um, I'm not sure if you have seen the status that I made recently. I quit my business last year in December, <laughs> January-ish, right? For a moment. 
And um, I was just Ubering. I was doing all these different things to fill in the blanks. And I was still kind of doing business stuff before then. But the point is, up to this point, I was really depending on all these background part-time jobs, Ubering, everything to really take care of me. So even though I had this business where I was bringing in money, it wasn't where the money had to pay all the bills. So I was in business, like I said, I transferred from network marketing to the business part of it. I was doing that for about a year and then I went silent December and January. So I started back up in February. I started my business back up. I had done the healing and I started up in February and I said to God, I started off, the reason I started my business back up was because I ended up crashing my car in January. So I stopped doing business and I focused on driving all this in January, December. And then I ended up crashing my car. And so I could have went and got another job at that point, um, find something else to do, or I could really focus on my business. So I remember praying in that moment, right before I started my business in February, hey, guy. I want to believe, because here's the thing when it comes to manifestation, because I also teach a lot of law of attraction, because it's healing, it's a healing modality. But the thing about manifestation, us believing in our desires, is most times God, the universe, the angels, whatever you call it, has already shown up for us before. He has already shown up and showed us that when we pray, we get what we want. But then a month later, we've forgotten again because there's some new <laughs> thing that's up and we're like, oh, my God, I'm questioning God. I'm questioning God. So or I feel like we even don't even acknowledge we don't like we're like, oh, of course we got that thing that we wanted. Of course. And right. Like, I'm, I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we don't acknowledge that it's what we prayed for. Right. right. So, yeah. So that's the place I was in January, February. I was like, I know you've blessed me before, but I've forgotten. It slipped my mind. I'm human. <laughs> So I don't want to go get another job right now. I crashed my car. Well, you crashed my car for me. I personally believe God did that intentionally to get me into my business. But if you pay my rent this month, I'm not going to go get a job. Instead, I'm going to do my business. If you pay my rent this month, I'm never going to forget. And I'm going to trust you to support me. So that's what I did. I didn't go fill out any more job applications. I did the weird thing. My mom, to this day, doesn't understand how I'm making money. <laughs> and I didn't get a job. I didn't do anything else. And here's the, the, the beautiful part of it is that month in February, the first month, I needed a certain amount of money to cover the bills. And it was this one girl who ended up buying this, for me, a beautifully priced course. It was 300 something dollars. And that was what I needed to really get over the hump. And she ended up buying a course. And I remember messaging her back like three or four months later, hey, you mind giving me a testimonial for that course you took? She was like, yeah, I actually haven't watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so she had literally just been a tool that God used in my life to answer a prayer. And that kind of moved me into this space in my business of you can trust God to support you last minute or not. God will find the person who needs what you have. And even if they don't need it, they have three hundred dollars to throw at you for no reason. <laughs> And yeah, that was a huge shift for me. And that took me from this being a hobby to this actually being a business that supported me. That was that major shift for me. So. Absolutely. So so when you're in a position where you forget or you have a client who's forgetting how blessed they have been, how God has shown up or the universe has shown up, whatever your belief structure is, how, how do you advise people to get back into that remembrance of I am safe, I am cared for, I am held, I am whole? How do you get back there? It's a couple things we can do. So we can, a lot of times when these negative fears or all this shows up, we're tempted to leave our bodies. We're tempted mm -hmm. to try to go into our minds, to our imagination, somehow get outside of that fear and not feel it because we are afraid of it. And I tell my girls all the time, why would you be afraid of something that's not real? So instead of running away from the fear, trying to ignore the fear, why don't we, it's literally a visualization I just gave to my girls in cyber. And I, I told them to imagine like the smaller self is being held by your goddess self. So it's no need to resist the thoughts and the beliefs of the smaller self. As long as you could recognize it as being sort of not the same thing as your goddess self, you can begin to put that space in between you and the emotion. And once you begin to put that space, a little bit more space, a little bit more space, suddenly you're with the goddess instead of the smaller self. 
So instead of resisting the fear, instead of, oh my God, I'm afraid, let me pretend like I'm not afraid. That doesn't work with manifestation. You have to confront the things and shift them. So look at them, honor them, hold them. Tell yourself it's a lie. Tell the smaller self this isn't true, but I understand you're here in this whole human experience. You're afraid. You don't know that, you know, God has so many plans for you. So that's beautiful. And I, I think it can be hard to reconnect with that, with that feeling. But I I I totally agree that when you can back up from it a little bit, recognize it for what it is, that is so powerful and so soothing and satisfying and, and helpful. But I, so you, you mentioned getting into your body. So I'm curious about what that looks like for you when you're coaching. How do you tell somebody to get into their body a little bit more? It's a practice. It's a practice of being aware of the easiest, best ways to become aware of your reactions to certain things. So how does your body move and react when you get a bill in the mail? Mm -hmm. How does your body move or react when you get on camera? How does your body move or react when something is due and you don't know how to <clears throat> how you're going to take care of it getting into your body is this interesting space of allowing yourself to feel the negative enough so that you can move past it so it's this very sensitive self-awareness that has to happen inside because a lot of times we are in our thoughts and we don't realize that the thoughts are a byproduct of some sort of feeling inside of the body. So bringing people outside of the thoughts back into the actual physical sensations of their body each time they have a sort of reactory experience so we can start learning your basic reactions and shifting them. That's awesome. Cause I think sometimes, you know, we have a, a, a negative thought and we want to like suck it back up, right? Like I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I don't want to manifest that for myself. I don't mean it. I don't want it. And and it's really easy to like, to not want to get into that and not feel into that. But I, I think you're hundred percent right. That's not how manifesting works. The more you try and shut your eyes, it's just like money management, financial management, which is what I do. Mm -hmm. It's people just want to shut their eyes and, and say a prayer and hope that it all goes away. And that's not, that's not going to do your bookkeeping and it's not going to help you with your manifesting either. <laughs> so. okay. Beautiful. So um, tell us about the lovely gift that one of our listeners will um, get from you. Oh, I'm so excited. So this whole year I've been doing like business stuff. I've been helping girls get free in their business because that's important too, right? But recently I've just been like, I want to, the whole reason I started this because I was depressed and mm -hmm. I needed help. So I wanted to create something that will serve people who you don't have to be depressed. But if you're not like super joyful about life, no matter how much money you're making or whatever, I wanted to create something that's going to guide you back to yourself. And it's called sacred joy, but you are joy. So I'm not teaching you anything new. I'm just teaching you how to get rid of all of this stuff that you picked up from society, these perceptions, these expectations, all these things that begin to interfere with your natural state of just being satisfied with the way the trees blow in the wind and the color of the sky. You miss all of that when you are carrying around societal expectations. So we have Sacred Joy is a 10 day healing experience. So beautiful. I'm getting so much beautiful feedback. And then you also get a magic wand. And I use magic wands for my rituals, my spells, just to kind of increase the magic. So that's your bundle, beautiful souls. You're welcome. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us if, if we need to just go buy a magic wand today from you, where can we find those? You go to my guy, oh, spiritualgoddessmagic.com. <laughs> spiritualgoddessmagic.com. Ayanna, thank you so much for being on today. I so appreciate you and the wonderful wisdom that you're spreading out into the world. Um, yeah, let's just spread more joy. Eh? I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much.